This is the Bhutto family mausoleum in the rural south of Pakistan. Since Benazir Bhutto's assassination last year, tens of thousands of people have made the pilgrimage to her grave. Some of these mourners have walked hundreds of kilometers to get here. She lies next to her revered father, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, founder of the Pakistan People's Party, or PPP. He was executed in 1979 by the military ruler of the day. Bhutto's death has left the country and its largest political party in turmoil. Her successor is Asif Ali Zadari, her controversial husband, who may be prime minister soon, but can't see beyond the tragedy. I think every moment and every, every part of my life is just trying to cope with the situation I'm in. I'm just not thinking very far ahead. I'm just taking every minute as it comes, every hour as it comes. Hello. As the grieving continues, the struggle for democracy goes on. Pakistan's lawyers have been leading the charge to oust President Musharraf ever since he put the Chief Justice under house arrest and sacked most of the nation's top judges. The Islamabad Bar Association has called a meeting to decide their next move. Our movement will remain till the reinstatement of the judges who have been deposed. And it will continue with full enthusiasm and full courage and full power. Whatever the risk. Whatever the risk. <laughs> Harun Rashid is the president of the Islamabad Bar Association. We, we are not hesitating from this situation. We will fight in the interest of nation and the inter, in the interest of country and the in, in the interest of judiciary and the constitution. He says General Musharraf has trampled on the constitution by reinstalling himself as president and stacking the courts with compliant judges. He knew that he will not be allowed to be to contest election of the president. Therefore, he once again imposed emergency on 3rd of November. And he removed all the judges of the superior courts illegally and unconstitutionally. And the persons who have no knowledge of law became the judges of the high court and supreme court. <laughs> Some of the more militant lawyers even want the ultimate punishment for Musharraf's hand-picked judges. But not everyone here agrees. <laughs> Political scientist Rasul Bakhsh Rais says he understands the lawyer's rage. I, I, I don't think that uh, it is less than a constitutional farce, an insult to the people of this country. If he can disband a judiciary, send 80% of the judges of the Supreme Court and High Courts of the country, uh, home, dismiss them, disqualify them, and pack the court with his favorites, and suspend the constitution twice, why he would not rig the elections? 
But this is a question of the record. And every by-election in this country, including his referendum, where uh, he obtained 98.3% of popular votes, a joke in, in the country. So uh, why he would not rig the election? The meeting decides to continue the boycott of Musharraf's stacked courts. We shall continue the strike till our objectives, achievement of our objectives. Okay, so that was unanimous, was it? Unanimous, it was unanimous. Uh, today, you have seen that not a single word has come contravened. We shall continue strike in high courts and Supreme Court. Parvez Musharraf is terrorist and a terrorist against Pakistanis, mm -hmm. against Muslims, mm -hmm. against uh, Dastur, against judges, against Bukla and against com civil community. Three days later, the lawyers decide to march on the Chief Justice's residence, where he's being held under house arrest. They're joined by colleagues from seven other bar associations and they're expecting trouble. The demonstration quickly turns ugly and the air soon swirls with tear gas. As the lawyers retreat, they're hit by more tear gas. Amidst the crowd, I see Rudad Khan, a retired bureaucrat who seems too old to be in a skirmish like this. It, it is not acceptable to the people of Pakistan. Chief Justice is in jail, you know. Here I come now. Yeah. As the lawyers are pushed back, I see the Islamabad Bar Association president, Harun Rashid, stranded between police and his colleagues. We got, we got cut off by the team. Yes, you got cut off. What were you trying to tell me before? Your, your eyes were straining with, uh, with uh, water the, the tear gas, yes. He's a usurper. He does not derive his authority from the people of Pakistan. He is unelected. He is illegitimate. He is illegal. He is unconstitutional. He has no authority to rule 160 million people of Pakistan. He has to go. He has to go. You know. There is no doubt about that. Many here are outraged that the West supports Musharraf. You are on the wrong side of history. You are all on the wrong side of history. You must be with the people of Pakistan, not with the usurper, not with the military dictator. She was the queen of hearts and she was... While protesters battle it out on the streets, Bhutto's party is preoccupied with honoring her memory at services like this. She was everybody's sister. She was everybody's daughter. She was everybody's friend. She was everybody's leader. And that kind of love from the people, you cannot buy from a slush fund. The party called 40 days of mourning after her death, so there's been no real political campaign. The time for mourning is not over for us, so bear with us if we stumble on the way. But certainly, we are trying to pick up where she left off. <laughs> Everyone expects a large sympathy vote in next week's poll.
it will never be known whether Benazir could have won. If she had, there was no guarantee she would have been effective. As Prime Minister twice before, her family did little to help the poor. But here, the true believers would disagree. With an election imminent, the party's office in the capital Islamabad should be buzzing with activity by now. But I find only the caretaker, Sain Taj. The caretaker's beloved party is no longer led by a Bhutto. And Asif Ali Zadari is a potentially divisive figure. When his wife was Prime Minister, he was known as Mr. 10% for receiving kickbacks from government projects. The former playboy spent 11 years in jail for what he says were trumped up corruption charges. And you are convinced that you are the right man for the job to take the party forward now? She was convinced, the party is convinced. I think I'll stand up and be counted. Zadari knows the power of the Bhutto name, so he made their 19-year-old son, Bilawal, co-chair of the party. But it will be another six years before Bilawal Bhutto Zadari is even able to enter politics here. So for the moment, his father is in the hot seat. I um, have also spoken to many of the party workers who have told me that they're prepared to put their lives on the line for your son. But I haven't heard that said f that they would be prepared to do that for you. Well, I ho I'm, not, I'm hoping that they won't need to do it for anybody. The idea is to make a Pakistan where nobody has to put their life in, in, uh, in the aid of democracy. But I welcome their sentiments for my son and I welcome their commitment to democracy. It just shows how committed people of Pakistan are to democracy. Whether it, it is for uh, my son or whether it was for her, the fact that they are committed to democracy is, uh, is the important message here. The 40-day mourning period has now ended, but there was only ever going to be one plan for the PPP, rely heavily on photos and images of the Bhutto martyrs. I think image is the only thing that uh, Pakistan People's Party has today. If you remove uh, Benazir Bhutto and, and, and uh, her father, Zulfqa Ali Bhutto, from the political campaign, what is left? Mr. Zardari. And uh, I don't think that uh, he is charismatic or he has a good reputation in the country. And he has uh, primarily been lucky being at the right time in Pakistan's history, at the right place, in the right family. And that is what is going to benefit him. But I think if there is going to be any benefit, this is going to be very temporary. I don't think that Pakistan People's Party has anything left with Benazir Bhutto gone. Although there's an overwhelming mood here that Musharraf should stand aside, he remains a powerful political force. The parliament is stacked with his supporters and he's even influential in poor areas like this. <laughs> These people have been squatting here on government land for 11 years, starting off in tents. <laughs> They say this government has looked after their interests. In the run-up to the election without a campaign, the governing party has been making well-targeted promises. They're putting in retaining walls and the telephone line. And there's even something for the kids. The election promises are clearly having the required effect in this marginal electorate. 
And this year, the party has played its Trump card and is promising people here title to their homes. Some people might say this is vote rigging. This is uh, kind of buying votes. Vote buying may be one thing, but Raiz says the whole electoral system has been rotted. The judiciary, which is ultimately going to decide the eligibility of the candidates uh, is not fair, is not in independent. And second is that the person who holds the office of chief election commission, commissioner in Pakistan is not independent of the wishes of the president. I was told the chief election commissioner does not give interviews, but his deputy does. I read today that a Gallup poll uh, says that only 15% of Pakistani people believe uh, that the elections will be free and fair. Why do you think there's so much no, no, mistrust? No, no, no. The, in, in Pakistan, the Gallup research report is not so authenticated. And there are the imaginary. So, so we do not read the, the, such kind of the Gallup research report. As for a damning report from the National Democratic Institute that says blackmail, intimidation and pre-poll rigging is rampant... <clears throat> the country director of the NDA is a friend of mine. <clears throat> All election-related issues which are being issued by her is based on imaginary. What about the, the fact that um, a lot of the judges are under house arrest and the Supreme Court... Oh, no, no, the, the, the election it, commission it, does not come... No, 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 the, the election commission of Pakistan but, does not come under the preview, but, but they are... But won't that, uh, won't no, that affect uh, no, the, no. the running of the No, 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 it will affect. Yesterday I met the uh, president of the Islamabad Bar Association who said that this office has no credibility whatsoever. That is the own imaginary talks. We, we could not say, say the anything. Hmm. Election Commission of Pakistan is a purely constitutional organization body. He, he under says the head of the chief election commissioner. He, he says the chief uh, he, yes, is, this is, is, a, is a, a very, very independent, uh, very, very, no compromise. This is independent election commission of Pakistan, yeah. just like in other democratic countries. We are more independent than American um, chief election commissioner. Okay, so he, he's uh, allegation that the no election... <laughs> why, why are you laughing? <laughs> we are always so laughing. Huh? My colleague is laughing. Because we are independent, we are very much strengthening your point of view. We, we are independent. Hmm. How can we call the challenge that we are not independent? We are independent. Uh, I'm just quoting you what people are telling me. I'm, no, I, no, no, no. <laughs> Nawaz Sharif is the other main contender for the Prime Minister's job. Sir, the elections will be free and fair? Do you think the elections will be free and fair? Uh, that's what the Election Commission no, officer told me yesterday. No, no, he said no. that they definitely will be. Well, they, they fired the first shot by uh, rejecting my nomination papers. Will you call them free, free and fair elections? So, so, so what, what are you going to do if, if the elections go ahead and they're not free and fair? What will you, be your reaction? We will, we will uh, resist that. We will uh, resist to the last day. We will uh, continue to launch this struggle against uh, dictatorial uh, style of ruling the country. Like Benazir, Nawaz Sharif is from a powerful clan and has also been Prime Minister before, but was overthrown by Musharraf in a coup. While the rival PPP is still in shock, Nawaz Sharif has plans for the future. I think the assumption is that uh, um, Mr. Musharraf would not be around and nobody knows how he is going to be out of the power. Uh, the other thing is that uh, Nawaz Sharif seems to be interested in democratic transition at the moment and he is emerging as a statesman 
and not rather a power hungry politician. He doesn't want to be depicted in those lights. So what he is basically Which promoting... Which is how he was remembered, is it? Yes. And then in the last year, the country has been in the country. We have been in the country and we have been in the country. And the government of Pakistan has been in the country. There is no doubt about it. And the government has been in the country and has been in the country. ججز جو ہیں وہ گھروں میں نظر بند ہیں میں نہیں سمجھتا کہ اس طرح کی مثال کسی بھی محذب تو دور کی بات ہے کسی بھی دنیا کے ملک کے بارے میں دی جا سکتی ہو جو کہ پاکستان فیسز ایک کرٹیکل مومنٹ ان ایس ٹربیلنٹ ہسٹری اس کمپلیکس نیشن کمبائن سنی اور شیعہ دی سیکلر اور دی فنڈمنٹل feudal warlords and Oxford-educated elites. <laughs> Meanwhile, President Musharraf supports the US and its war on terror, where most of the Pakistani people do not. Whichever party wins next week will need to juggle these competing forces, which some say threaten to tear the nation apart. If the PPP does win this election, can you explain to me how you plan to balance the different interest groups in this complicated country? By making a, across the board, large collision with us. The idea is to share power with everybody and anybody, and then collectively take decisions because the issues and the problems are so deep and so far reaching that unless we don't have collective wisdom, unless we don't have all the folds of the society with us, we will not be able to solve the problem. I think uh, this is a, a new thinking uh, taking uh, very deep root in Pakistan across the political divide, that time has come that the mainstream political parties work together. And the idea is that a government of national consensus uh, uh, for the for next five years, so that we have stability, we tackle those issues, and then they may be contesting elections.